We hear this all the time, but are we actually listening to this statement? Simple things make big changes. This is a few snippets of a podcast episode I recorded with Sherry Jib of The Healing Place, Pilates and Yoga. She's here on YouTube. I've linked her below. And we had a great discussion about realistic movement that supports our strength and our mobility in our 50s and beyond. So if you want to keep moving through these years with me and with Sherry, this is an episode that you need to listen to and a video you need to tune in into. Simple things add up to big changes. This is a powerful quote in this episode. Join me in this episode with Sherry. If you think that you are limited in your movements through midlife, if you don't want to think that acceptance means giving up and you'd like to move into a place where you can be intentional in your body, feel good with exercise and movement and think differently about what your aging body can do. Hey there, welcome back. If you're new here, nice to meet you. My name is Tanya. My office is a little dark today. I need to invest in better lighting, but right now I'm in a dumb is better than perfect mode because at my age, I just don't get to her. It may never happen. You want to have conversations like this one about all the things we can do in midlife to enhance our health and well-being without diets, then I think you need to hang out with me. You can do that here or on Instagram, maybe a little bit of TikTok. One of the reasons I was drawn to you is because of your philosophy of movement, breath, and thought. So this originally came about because I was looking on YouTube. We were just into the pandemic. You know, we all thought it was only going to last a week or two, right? that that was going to be it. Here's a chance, Sherry, to to challenge yourself and go pick another teacher online and, and, and just do some stuff that feels good for you. And it was really hard for me to find something um, that represented my stage in life, my body type. It wasn't there. I'm just going to create it. You know, small steps create really big change. But as women, we tend to really complicate things. It has to be an hour. We should be doing this amount of strength training. We should be doing this amount of cardio. And we should be, we should be, we should be. Put a comment below if this is you or this used to be you. If you have this running thought in your head, like I should be doing this. I should be at the gym five days a week at 6 a.m. Yada, yada, yada. Is this you? Because that certainly was me. And sometimes it still can be. But we're also at a very busy stage in our lives. Throw in some menopause and some perimenopause, and she's a wild ride some days. And putting that extra stress on yourself to should be, you know, is not going anywhere good. So I like to teach movement for women where they can start with 10 to 20 minutes a day. Keep it small. Keep it simple. Just get connected to your body, especially as your body is shifting and changing. And when it comes to the breath, the breath is the gateway to the present moment. And when you pair that with movement, you get to know yourself at a deeper level. I know some of you watching might be thinking, I don't have time to sit and breathe. I don't have time to slow down and be like right here, right now. And I get it. That was me. I was like that before I started with some simple steps to let in just some presence, mindfulness. This was all when I was learning mindful eating and it takes a little bit of practice, but if you allow yourself to take one deep breath, you actually can slow down your nervous system and decrease some of that stress. Okay, more than one deep breath, maybe three. I mean, we are just so great at beating ourselves up, at telling ourselves we're not enough. And it's no wonder because society, and I know you do this work as well, right? Society tells us we're not enough. You know, we should be this and we're not allowed to age and, you know, remain youthful and... And I don't know about you, but I like the aging process. I don't have an old mindset, but I do understand that my knees don't quite work like they did 20 years ago. Here's where I paused and asked Sherry, and I'd love to hear your thoughts too. Are we as a collective aging group of women, if you're in your fifties or beyond, are we hanging on to our past selves that we can't we can't go there anymore. Is this why we're hung on to maybe our old pair of jeans, what we used to do in the gym, what we wish we could do in the gym? What do you think? Are we hanging on to the past result of the hour cardio, the hour weight session at the gym? Where do you think this comes from? Is it just media? What do you think? That as you're coming into the midlife experience, there is a grieving process that needs to happen where we let go of where we once were. For instance, if I was going on a tropical vacation, I had a six-week recipe that worked 
every single time. It would involve a food plan to lean me out. It would involve intervals either outside or on the treadmill that would lean me out, get me bikini ready. And I was off to the tropics and it worked like a charm every single time. It was my recipe. And then all of a sudden it didn't. And all of a sudden I didn't have the energy to push myself like that and punish myself like that. And I just got really tired of doing it. I hope I'm not interrupting you too much here, but I wanted to pause. Some of you listening, watching may not relate to, I used to be able to do all this stuff and it worked because the reality is that this never worked for a lot of us. So we're all in different bodies. This is one person's perspective, my perspective at a snippet in time. I just wanted to acknowledge that there may be some of you watching that this could trigger because, you know, that you may have never been able to do hard cardio or any of this stuff because of some limitations in your mobility, you know, all of it. I hope this makes sense. And so I drew a line in the sand, but there was a grieving process for me where I was like, what do you mean this doesn't work anymore? This has worked always. In that grieving process, I was letting go of who I was and stepping into who I wanted to become. And I asked myself the question, okay, what do I want the next 30 years to look like? Do I want it to look like me punishing myself to try to get into a size? Or do I want to be strong and mobile and playing with my grandkids and hiking and mountain biking and cross-country skiing and snowshoeing and doing the things I love that bring quality of life? The second thing I did was I cleared out my social media just like you clear out your closet. And I went through my social media feeds and I got rid of everything that if on first look, I didn't feel good about myself. If it was something that triggered a, oh, look at her. Oh, I'm not working hard enough. <sighs> yeah. Out, gone. And I filled it full of positive social media. So my social media feed feeds me. You are on my social media feed. You feed me, my dear. And right, it's it just, it feeds my mind, my body and my spirit and empowers me. And I am not gonna take my time, my precious time and energy being disempowered by someone else's post. What do you think of that? Okay, I love it. I mean, I've done a podcast episode about scrubbing your social media feed, putting in diversity, putting in people of our age so that we don't have a skewed view of what health is. There's a lot more in the podcast episode. Link is below. Please subscribe. It's on many different platforms. And I want to leave you with this thought. And I want to leave you with this thought. If you have another 30 years ahead of you, how do you want to live it? How do you want to be in your body? Have you spent enough time looking back on what was? And I totally get the looking back on what was. Catch my video about grieving, about heart hunger, about emotional eating through grief. But how do you want to go forward? Because that really is, that's that's the only option is going forward. I keep saying we're aging and we're lucky to be doing it. So I hope to see you again, either on the podcast, Instagram, or in the next video. Let me know your thoughts below. Take care.